So my name is John Bishop. I am a web developer. I work at AMP Agency here in Boston, an uh, integrated marketing company. I'm lucky enough, I get to focus on all the WordPress stuff. Uh, so one of the things that I uh, specialize in and I pride myself in is the ability to create websites that are ultimately easy for my clients to manage after I hand it off to them. So if I put together some kind of uh, doc documentation showing them exactly how to manage their site. I want them ultimately to be able to do it all without having to come back to me because I'm pretty busy, not that I don't like them. Um, so this talk is specifically addressing one problem. Um, it's editing, modifying content within your posts so that you're creating better looking content. Um, this is just one solution. We'll talk about the pitfalls, the benefits, and uh, everything a bit later. But in a nutshell, uh, WordPress users with minimal HTML experience spend too much time trying to create and format content. So, uh, first of all, before I tell you exactly what they are, uh, to keep the suspense going, why are short codes useful? Well, they're easy to manage. They're, uh, it, makes the, it makes it easier to access dynamic content. So you can display like tweets or pull feeds in from external sites, work with APIs. Uh, using other plugins and stuff, but the short codes ultimately make it easy for you to put this content right within your post. Uh, it helps simplify repetitive tasks. So if you find yourself copying and pasting HTML code from like one file into another one, just so you can modify it a little bit, you can probably wrap it into a short code and streamline that process a little bit. Uh, and finally, I think it makes things look pretty. Uh, there's a lot of cool plugins out there that uh, help you create calls to action and I don't want to get too hard into it right now because I have a lot of slides that show you guys examples of what you can do. Uh, but this is why it's useful and why I decided I want to talk about it today. So what are short codes? Um, this is a real life short code that I created for one of my clients. Uh, basically, they were required to copy this bit of code at the top right here into, or let's press allow because I know that's something all the time, so that they can get this funky little button down here all stylized and looking pretty. And they might have multiple different colors of that button, so I didn't want to make it so all links look exactly like that. I wanted them to be able to easily change the color of that button, but create it easily within their post without having to copy this code. Because with this code, all they have to do is mess up the class, mm -hmm. not close it properly, and then everything breaks. They don't have that button. So instead, I created a short code where all they had to do was copy this. So it breaks it down to the bare minimum. This is a blue button. And all I need from them for this is the link and the text. And that generates the exact same button. So that's what a short code is. It's basically a macro. Right? Um, at the bottom of all my slides, which actually, sorry, let me go back for a second. Um, you can follow this presentation uh, from this bit.ly link. It's up on Google Docs. Uh, so if there's any links or uh, functionality you like, you can save it yourself and you can find it later too. Um, and this will be up on Boston WordCamp or something as well. But at the bottom of every slide, so this is just WCBOS underscore shortcodes, bit.ly link. At the bottom of every slide, I put links to references related to that slide so you guys can find what you're looking for a bit faster. Right? I want to give you guys tools to walk away with so that you can actually implement this on your site after the fact. And it's not just theory. Right? So, WordPress.org shortcodes. This is the only shortcode, well, one of the more well-known shortcodes that you have access to on your self-hosted WordPress site. Uh, there's a few other ones in bed, and um, this is the main one. Uh, not a lot of people know it exists. So if you attach a bunch of images by attaching your, literally uploading images within a post, that, post get, that image gets attached to that post. If you drop this gallery shortcode in there, it automatically formats it like that easy way to create a nice little gallery within your content without having to install an additional plugin. So that's kind of an idea of the stuff that you can do. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of the only real valuable ones to get out of the box. We'll talk about more you can do with short codes with a cool plugin WordPress made available to us. But for now, gallery, check it out. It's really cool. A lot you can do with it. Um, there's a bunch of options you can do with it too. We'll get into that. You can go uh, I didn't add, there was a link to the bottom of this one, there's not. But if you look up the gallery short code, you can find about how else you can customize it. So then, 
WordPress.com uh, makes all of these short codes available to people, basically because on WordPress.com, they don't want you pasting JavaScript code into the posts because uh, they don't know what you're going to post in there. Um, and you can do anything. So ultimately, this lets you add like YouTube videos, Vimeo, Flickr, uh, Pull Daddy, Google Maps, all those traditional embed codes that you normally put into your site uh, but using these short codes. So these are all available to WordPress.com users. And then WordPress.org users were stuck with Gallery. <laughs> uh, so they created this plugin called Jetpack. Jetpack uh, takes a lot of the functionality that they built into WordPress.com, abstracts that functionality, and makes it available to WordPress.org users. So by installing Jetpack, you have site, uh, site, stat, site stats available, um, pull daddy, uh, share daddy's built in as well, and ultimately you get that list on the left, or your right, of all those shortcodes. All right, just easy ways, easy ways to create uh, embed content into your site and manage it without having to manage the embed codes. Uh, because if you try to paste JavaScript into uh, WordPress, you probably notice that it strips it out and it can be kind of a pain to manage. So these things make stuff a little bit easier. Um, so I wanted to share. And at the bottom, you can find a list of all the short codes at that site right there. Uh, again, you can find it on the slide. So using short codes, the different types of short codes. Uh, basically, uh, you have enclosed, uh, <coughs> so, enclosed and self-enclosed. So an enclosed uh, short code would be something like this, where you, ha you give it a beginning and an end. Uh, the content's enclosed in the middle. Um, we could also do something like this, where it's just the short code by itself. It self-encloses itself. Right? So that's the difference between those. And then you have attributes as well. So I can do, I could add a short code with a bunch of attributes. So that could be like in my original example, where I added the, the link. Um, and then I can com combine that with the content in the middle. So in my original example, this was the link, and this was the content that got wrapped in the link. Um, and that kind of opens up a whole plethora of possibilities as far as how you can combine those to create uh, just easier to read and use um, short codes within your content instead of managing HTML tags. So. Uh, I don't want to get too far into this. I want to make this available to you guys so you can look into it later. I want to move past this and get more into the examples, like what you guys can do with it. Because you guys probably won't be creating your own short codes. Uh, you'll probably find other plugins or run into themes or plugins that offer them. Um, and a lot of what I want to do is make you aware of what they can do, why not to use them, when to use them, and how to use them. But if you did want to create your own short code, this is how you would do it. This short code, uh, WPB, I just paste that into my WordPress editor and press publish, the output would be Hi Boss and Working. Simple enough. So an easy way to standardize text across your site. If you wanted to add something at the bottom, you can paste the short code in, change it in that one place, and you know the link will change everywhere. Um, so short codes can become more complex once you start adding content and attributes. And here's an example of what that would look like. Uh, basically setting my default classes and links, and then creating my, my HTML and outputting it. So it does works in a similar fashion. Ultimately, all they have to do is insert this link short code, and it generates the HTML for them automatically. Right? Um, so you can find this on in the WordPress.org codex, and uh, the previous slide actually has a link to the codex on it. And there are a lot of examples of like functions that you can paste into your functions.php file, which I wouldn't recommend, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's see some examples like what you can actually do. This is a, I think it's a striking thing. Uh, a client I worked with a while back, and basically this was their <laughs> a, a creation of their homepage. Uh, just paragraphs split up to just look plain and boring. There was obviously a site around it, but the content area itself wasn't much to look at. So ultimately, they don't know how to float stuff left and right, align things, add drop caps, make images, displays, backgrounds. It, it's not too hard, but it's just extra stuff you have to know and remember to do it again later. So using short codes that are built into this theme with this exact same copy, they're able to make it look like that. Which, I'm not a designer. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's a lot better than what they had. So I'm just gonna run through 
a bunch of examples for you guys. Um, so these two, or this one right here is taken from Elegant Themes, one of my favorite uh, premium theme providers. You pay like a base price and you have access to all of their themes. Uh, the cool thing about using them is if you do use them and you get attached to their short codes and start relying on them, you can change between their themes without losing the shortcode functionality because all their short, their themes share that, those shortcodes. Uh, and I like those because the buttons are just pretty, uh, elegant themes, everything's elegant about them, uh, obviously. And then down there we have uh, just nice content boxes, calls to action. Uh, that's the J shortcodes plugin. Right? And I'll talk about a couple of plugins you guys can use for this kind of stuff in a second. So I have like five slides of examples, just fly through these. So this is just an example of what an icon list could look like. So you have your default bullets. Um, this is just the same thing with check marks next to it. Uh, down there, creating columns. So organizing your single page into multiple columns stacked on top of each other, with images. Uh, you can do a lot with formatting with shortcodes. Drop caps. Easily create kind of that magazine news feel to your content. Uh, quotes. I think quotes are a big part of uh, good blog posts. Basically, creating a good blog post, you should uh, ultimately break out your main points and feature the points that you want people to really absorb because they're just going to scan your content. And if they're going to be scanning my content, I want to make sure that I'm accenting the important stuff in a way that's going to catch their eye. So I like stuff like that, that kind of separates the important stuff from the rest of the text. It says, this is something important, this is a quote. And I liked that one. So I put it in here. Uh, pricing tables. Uh, I forget, I think that's Elegant Themes. Yeah. Um, so Elegant Themes, again, awesome. They do a lot of cool things. But the ability to create this pricing table, which would traditionally have it in a bunch of paragraphs, maybe with an image next to it. But this looks a lot nicer. It's easy to compare side by side. So it's available. And there are other plugins that do that besides Elegant Themes. Uh, author info. So one of the plugins I maintain is the HubSpot for WordPress plugin. One of the things we do is we allow people to create team pages based off of the author bios. So you can go and using a short code, use the author IDs of all the people you want to be in your team page, and it stacks them on top of each other like that with their social profiles, their image, and the text next to it. Um, so just a unique use of a short code. And using this method, you can create uh, kind of nested pages based on the hierarchy of your team. So you could have like all your C-level execs in one page, your interactive team, your marketing department in the pages, and kind of organize it the way you like. Contact forms. If you've used C Form 7 or Gravity Forms, you probably already use shortcodes. Um, they make it easy for you. So they, they provide uh, ways to insert the shortcodes, so you probably didn't even think about it. Uh, you probably just click the button and put it in for you. But they rely on shortcodes to make it easy for you to maintain and move around um, and ultimately create a better user experience. And then stuff, what I talked about in the beginning about uh, short codes enabling people that don't necessarily understand HTML and JavaScript, to be able to create these complex HTML elements that you see in a lot of sites that rely on things like jQuery, uh, CSS3, if you stuck around for the last session. Um, you could also create cool things like that, like tabs or accordions or slideshows using short codes. Um, so these are just all things that are possible, and uh, ultimately they make it easier for you. So these are four free uh, WordPress plugins that I recommend checking out if you're interested in short codes. Um, I know I mentioned some themes. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But as far as short codes go, I would recommend uh, finding short codes in a plugin over a theme for a couple of reasons. But basically, um, the first two short codes do a lot of what I just showed in those examples. They create uh, the pricing tables, the tabs, the light of style or elements a bit nicer. Each one displays things a bit differently, but nice to have. Shortcodes Pro uh, allows you to create your own shortcodes. So if you have text you're using, you're copying and pasting stuff across the entire site, it might be easier to remember CTA1 in a bracket. And as your, your first call to action, you play that, display that wherever you want. And you paste the HTML for that, in the plugin and it manages all the shortcodes for you. And then shortcode reference. So when you create a shortcode, it all gets stored in WordPress, and WordPress can in turn go back and see what shortcodes are available. This plugin uh, displays all the shortcodes that are available so that you can easily insert it into your site. Um, this comes in handy 
Uh, you just can't remember the short codes, which is one of the problems, which I think is what we're about to talk about next. This after I tell you about the cool uses. <laughs> um, so some other things we're doing. Uh, so in the HubSpot for WordPress plugin, there's a call to action manager. And not, you can use the call to actions within widgets in your sidebar, but you can also put the calls to action within your content. Um, and we do that using short codes. Uh, I say call to action, but basically they could also be an ad manager. So inserting ads like Google Ads or your own calls to action using a short code into your content is just a unique way of using them. Some social media plugins uh, give you short codes so that you can position the, the buttons within your content. So whereas traditionally they're either below your post or within the content somewhere, you can say you want it at the top left within the content somewhere randomly or anywhere in there. Um, so it calls to action. Uh, posts from RSS, there are short codes that allow you to specify an RSS feed and display the last three posts from it or something like that. So it's just an easy way to bring content in from another site. And there are other plugins that in interface with other APIs and display content using short codes. It's just another cool way you can use them. Hiding private content. You can, you can hide an entire post to make it password protected, but what about hiding half a post? So you can wrap it within short code as hidden, and then only once they're logged in can they see that content. Uh, displaying widgets in, con in, uh, in content. So being able to take your Twitter widget that you like in your sidebar and put the call, basically create a short code that calls that widget and displays it within your content. So you can ultimately use widgets anywhere in your site. Right? So this is the part I wanted to get to. So short codes are awesome. They make things very easy for people that don't understand how HTML works or can't take the time to understand how HTML works. And on top of that, keep stay on top of all the changes and the CSS specifications, the HTML5 specifications, and constantly you know, create these complex elements. Uh, but most of the time, if you're spending that much time remembering a shortcode anyways, you can probably learn the HTML equivalent to do it yourself. So if you're using shortcodes to make things bold and to create just basic links and to do italics, just go and learn the equivalent uh, in HTML. So ultimately, if you do decide to move later or if something happens and you can't rely on those shortcodes anymore, your code's still gonna work. So that goes into themes versus plugins. If you use shortcodes that are uh, basically created in the, the theme versus in a plugin, you're tied to that theme if you use that shortcode across your entire site. So if your homepage looks like the homepage I showed you earlier in my example, and I'm using maybe 20 different shortcodes in there, and then I switch themes, you're gonna see the shortcode 20 times like, like scattered without the, con with the all around the content, uh, and it's gonna look horrible. There are plugins that can strip that out for you, but you ultimately have to go back and either reset up those short codes somewhere else, um, or it's just gonna look messy and you're gonna take the time to remove it yourself. So uh, I would only recommend using, like relying on short codes in a theme if you see yourself, one, never moving from that theme ever. Or two, you feel like you can dive in and you know, abstract that functionality, move it somewhere else, and you will make it work for you, you know? Or uh, three, if you're using a theme provider that has multiple themes that all rely on those short codes. So like Woo themes, if you use any one of their themes, uh, you can use the same widgets and short codes across most of them. Um, and same with elegant themes. Uh, you can set them up in one, and there's like 50 themes now, I think maybe more. And you can easily switch between the themes and keep all those short codes and keep all the styles. Uh, otherwise, I recommend building them in plugins. So whether that means taking your newly created short codes and putting them inside what we call a functionality prep plugin, basically it's just the stuff you put in your functions.php file normally in your theme, but put it in a plugin so that you can move away from that theme later without losing those short codes. Uh, and that's why I recommend uh, when you're looking for that kind of functionality, don't look for it in the theme originally. Uh, look for it in a plugin that'll work well with other themes. And, um, that's usually the best approach because then you can move across themes without having to worry about that. Another downfall is uh, you can't, um, out of the box, nest short codes. So I have, if I have my blue button short code and I want to put it within my call to action short code, uh, I can't. Uh, 
basically WordPress just goes through, processes all your content once through, and it doesn't know to go back and try again once my new content has generated its own shortcode. So you have to build that into the plugin or to the shortcode yourself. So if you're making the, the shortcode and you're creating that call to action shortcode, you have to make sure you go through and run uh, your do shortcode again, basically, on that content to make sure it runs all the shortcodes in there first before it returns it into the main content. All right, so it's something to be aware of if you're trying to nest shortcodes. Uh, it's something to look for in the plugin if you're trying something new. Does it handle nested shortcodes? Uh, it's something to be aware of. And the last problem is usability. Uh, and I touched on this in the beginning of the slide. If you're going to take the time to remember these shortcodes and pay, copy and paste them from another document into your WordPress site, then you might as well just paste the original HTML code or learn it, right? So that's where the that plugin I showed earlier, the reference plugin, would come in handy. Um, but there are just some more elegant solutions, and I want to show you some of those now. So making shortcodes easier. Um, this is Elegant Themes again. Uh, they provide these extra buttons within the, the editor. And to insert the short codes, you just click the, the corresponding button. And it brings up this little panel right here where you can configure the short code <coughs> and then ultimately insert it into the site and generate the final short code. Makes it a lot easier than remembering the short code and trying to figure out exactly what properties to add. And you run into the same problem as HTML. Did you match everything up properly to make sure you didn't break it? So here's some other examples. Um, I'm pretty sure that striking again, striking theme at the top again. Uh, that's how they handle short codes. Rather than doing it within the editor, they do it in a box below the editor. You can select the short code you want to do, and then all the settings pop up below it. And you can configure it that way. Um, and then in the HubSpot for WordPress plugin, we took a similar approach to Elegant Themes, where you click on the little HubSpot icon, pop up comes up, and you can configure your short codes from there and click Insert. It generates the short code and inserts it from there. These are a lot easier to do than remembering these massive shortcodes, especially when I first started using J shortcodes, they don't have this. So I had to go back to the J shortcodes page, copy my shortcodes out, paste them in my site, and I'd do that every time I wanted to add new shortcodes. Right, so this is a lot easier. So some tips and tricks. This is another one of those things. Uh, don't want to go over too much, but I want to touch on just as a resource you guys had it available to you. Um, you can, so by default, WordPress goes in and runs all the shortcodes in your content. If you need to run a shortcode in your theme, so say you find a cool shortcode online somewhere in a plugin, and you want to display the shortcode somewhere not within your content, within your footer or in the sidebar, uh, then you can just do the do shortcode PHP function and actually execute, it executes all of the shortcodes within this string. So I could have that just be the shortcode, I can have it be two shortcodes right next to each other. Um, and it'll execute all of them and return the content. This allows me to run shortcodes in the text widget in WordPress. So if there's a cool shortcode I like that displays tweets, um, all I have to do is just add this to my functions.php file or my functionality plugin file. And at that point, I can automatically start adding shortcodes to my text widget. Uh, similar to that, uh, you can run shortcodes in comment text. So you can make shortcodes available to your commenters and your readers. And uh, it could be something silly, like maybe different icons you make available to them. Um, and this makes that uh, possible. And then finally, uh, that should not say run in comment text again. It should say run short codes in the excerpt. Uh, basically, on the excerpt on the home page, we have it just displaying summaries. It relies on a stripped down version of your post. By default, it does not run the short codes. So you drop that into your functions.php or your functionality plugin, and it'll automatically run all the short codes um, in your excerpt. So handy functions to be aware of. Uh, you can, they're kind of scattered throughout the docs. So this is it in one place, and you can find them in the slides. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about embedding content in WordPress. Because um, I found the more I talked about short codes, the more this came up. So embedding JavaScript into your posts and pages is hard. If you're using WordPress.com, it's not just hard, it's impossible. You can't do it. Um, but if you're using WordPress.org, you can do it in the HTML ed editor, click update, as long as you don't click back to the visual editor. And, and if you're extremely lucky, sometimes it'll go away anyways. 
it's just, it's really finicky, um, and WordPress is aware of that. But they, I feel like they don't publicize it enough, that there is an actual solution. Um, so, something that they baked into WordPress uh, is this thing called Oembed. Basically, all you do is provide the original URL to the post, and it makes a call out to that service, and returns back the embed code, and WordPress in turn knows to display it. Uh, so, as an example, uh, pasting YouTube embed code uh, video, videos into your content uh, can be a pain. But all you really have to do is just paste the link into your post, and it'll automatically render it as a YouTube video. Not a lot of people knew they can do that. You can do that with Vimeo, you can do it with Flickr, you can do it with SlideShare, Google Maps, you can do it with a lot of uh, popular services. Um, and actually, I have a list on the next slide. For anything that does not show up on the next slide, you can add it yourself. You can both add the provider and register the handler that it returns. Once again, these are just uh, functions I threw on here for any developers that are interested in learning more. I don't want to dive into it too much. Uh, but uh, this functionality is extremely important. Uh, I think everyone needs to know about it. So here is the list of uh, providers that WordPress comes with out of the box. So if you're trying to embed your Viddler video into your site, all you need to do is paste the link on its own line, and it'll automatically render it as a shortcut, or as a, the, the embed code. If you wanted to um, embed it in the same line as something else, and maybe set the width and the height, because I think by default, it actually stretches the video to the width of the content. Um, if you wanted to actually can either control the width and the height or have it not explain its own line, you can just do the same thing, paste that same link in, but wrap it in the embed shortcode tags. Um, I don't think I threw that up here, but it's literally the same shortcodes I had before, open and close brackets, um, embed, and the same shortcode at the end of the link with the uh, close before, before uh, after it. Um, and then with that, you can add additional attributes to the short code, or to the embed short code, like the width and the height and stuff. And you can put that on the same line or within a paragraph, and it'll render the video within that paragraph. Right? So, uh, on top of this, I also help run the Boston WordPress meetup with Kurt. Um, this is actually a talk I gave a year, uh, a year and a half ago. Um, and it's changed a lot since then. but. I do this because I want to give people actionable uh, advice with their WordPress sites. And that's what me and Kurt work really hard to do is put together this meetup where people can come and learn like, things that they can go home and play with and make actual changes to their site so that you know, they're getting something from our meetup. Uh, so if you haven't already, come check us out. We're the second largest WordPress meetup in the world uh, next to New York City. So they have about 2,000. Um, we're growing every day. It's really hard for me and Kurt to manage it all. So if you guys are interested in speaking, sponsoring, or just supporting us, coming, helping answer questions and stuff, uh, email one of us. Um, we do our meetups once a month on Mondays. Uh, but you can honestly uh, come and support us. If there's free pizza, that helps. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much my spiel on short codes. Uh, I wanted to fly through it because last year I had a lot of questions. I want to make sure there's some time. Um, if you guys don't have questions, don't worry about it. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, and if you guys do have questions, can you please walk up to the mic too and ask them? Because uh, we are recording and we want to make sure we can hear everybody's awesome voices. Thanks. If you guys have questions, you can just uh, approach and line up um, just so we can have the fire. Yep. Hi. Um, a couple times you mentioned .com versus .org. Yep. Whether things would work or were available. What about when you're hosting somewhere entirely different on your own? Well, if you're using .org, .org is just kind of another way of saying that you host the website yourself. Oh, it is. So okay. yeah. So it really can host it anywhere, and you have those shortcodes available to you, um, especially if you use Jetpack. Okay. Thank you. Are there any performance hits that we should be uh, looking at short code versus direct uh, coding? Yep, it's actually really fast. I haven't found any benchmarks to, to prove that it's uh, fast or not fast, but the way it actually runs, there's not much that would actually slow anything down. The only thing to be aware of is what you're actually, what the short code actually does. 
So if you're using a short code that relies on that displays JavaScript, that's going to you know, slow down the site on top of it, and that's obviously going to slow it down. So just be aware of the type of short code, but uh, ultimately there's no significant performance uh, loss. As far as the um, the server side part of this is pulling out short codes for ADA compliancy and stuff, is there anything that would change as far as um, you know for the the uh, American Disabilities Act kind of stuff as far as browser readers, um, what what that might impact on using short codes? Uh, yeah, so uh, it, it's going to render the short code on any version of the WordPress site. So whether it's uh, so a lot of that's up to the theme, um, but the WordPress itself is always going to actually process and render the short code, so they won't see uh, little brackets with stuff in it. They'll see the rendered content. But will it render it first, or will it render it in line as how it's being used in, in context with the rest of the CSS? It'll it'll render it for the it renders it for the CSS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You you mentioned um, nested short codes, and I wanted you to. Um, I, I just guess I didn't follow because I was like, why would you want to nest it? And maybe give a better example. Yeah. So like, um, uh, so like this for example. Say for say I wanted to display one of these buttons uh, in this shortcode down here. It, it already has its own built-in button, okay. so it's got a problem there. But say I wanted to add it somewhere else in this text, I couldn't out of the box do that because it would look. It would basically be my CCA shortcodes open and close, and then within it would be the button shortcode somewhere. Uh, so it, it wouldn't know to render it, basically. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. I also wanted to ask, um, you said uh, something like, uh, you could obviously build a shortcode yourself, but then you could also make a plugin um, that you would want to use in the site. How do you make the plugin? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, like, is that official plugin, or are you using it like you're building it? Yeah, well, an official, an official plugin, really old, all it is is your uh, the, your one file that has the, the metadata at the top saying that it's a, it's a plugin so that WordPress can show it up in the, make it show up in the plugins list. Uh, and then you would just paste in the code that you would normally paste into your functions.php file right into that, that one. And then the only difference is functions.php automatically gets run with your theme, whereas putting it in a plugin, you can activate and deactivate the plugin to turn that functionality on and off. Um, yeah. So that answer the question. Yeah. All right, cool. So yeah, wow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, last meetup, you were talking about um, kind of custom host types, and you talked a little bit about best practices related to you know as a plugin developer related to that. Uh, in terms of nested. Uh, Short code processing. Is there a similar, a similar sort of best practice as a plugin developer? Yeah. So it, it it's hard because you have to anticipate the what short code they're actually going to try and implement. So I think it's up to the developer. So like my HubSpot call to action plugin. If I find that they're using specific buttons or specific other short codes somewhere else, I can bake those into the HubSpot WordPress plugin to look for those and trigger them when it sees it. Um, so I think that's ultimately up to the developer of the plugin that could be expecting the nested shortcodes, but no one ever expects nested shortcodes. Spanish <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping someone. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, quick notes, so make sure you stick around, there will be closing remarks, and then uh, afterwards, hopefully see all of you guys at Game On, and of course tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks again.